I wish I had one thing to do. I'd like to call this meeting of the Princeton City Council to order. Clerk, call roll. Mayor Mabry. Here. Councilmember Newman. Gomez. Here. McCall. Here. McCransky. Here. Would you please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. We're going to be uh, going now to public comment. The public comment period is at the beginning of the meeting as well as at the end. If you'd like to get up to the microphone and state your name, we'd love to hear what you say, please. My name is Carolyn Stahl. I was here last week, or two weeks ago, with um, a bunch of my neighbors concerning the house at 526 North Chestnut. Uh, the nuisance house that was in the paper that you guys were going to consult on and, and talk about. Um, I called Angie today and she said that she talked with your team and that, um, that you hired a lawyer and that you had like three methods to go to um, but no real detail that she was given and, and there was no time to, you know, as to what it's going to be, what, what action is going to be. Well, I, I, I did include those times in the email, but... So, you know, do you want to talk about it now, or do you want to talk about it after the meeting? Probably after the meeting, if that's okay. Okay. I'll I just wanted to come up here and just ask what's going on. Sure. Mm, absolutely. What we can do, what I can do. Okay. And I think there's a presumption that we thought that by sharing it with the one neighbors, so maybe they would share with the other, but that was our error. We should have... Uh, reached out to you folks as well. So okay. he'll talk to you right after the meeting then and give you another. <coughs> yeah, and I can send you the same email I sent out. Oh, would you? Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then I can send it to sure. the other one. Okay. 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 Great. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, you Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Anyone else for public comment? Okay. We'll move on now to um, minutes from our regular council meetings from January 2nd. I move we approve the minutes and regular council meeting on January 2nd, 2024. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any questions or comments from the council? Seeing none, clerk call roll. Councilmember Gomez? Here. Aye. McCall? Aye. McCransky? Aye. Mayor Mabry? Aye. Thank you. Now we'll go to the invoices with Pete Nelson. For the for this period, in the Department of Accounts and Finances, we have invoices totaling 113000 $317.28. In the Department of Streets and Public Improvements, we have invoices totaling $89,450.95. In the Department of Public Safety, we have invoices totaling $248,126.56. And in the Department of Public Property and Utilities, we have invoices totaling $239,497.85 for a grand total of $690,392.84. Mayor, all council members present have confirmed the reviews of all invoices and now are submitted for disposition. I move that we approve the invoices as presented. Second. We have a motion and second. Is there any questions or comments from the council? Seeing none, clerk call roll. Councilmember Gomez? Aye. McCall? Aye. McCransky? Aye. Mayor Mabry? Aye. Thank you. Can we go to the resolutions, please? Okay, next on the agenda are uh, resolutions authorizing abatement of the 2023 tax levy. This consists of resolution R 24 001. This is um, bond. 2013-A, uh, original, the original um, principal was $900,000. Uh, this is a general obligation refunding bond, alternate revenue source, and it is associated for debt on the water tower. Followed by resolution R-24-002. This is associated with bond 2014-D. Original principal was $1.17 million. 
general obligation refunding bond, alternate revenue source. This is um, associated with the, with the TIF district, debt with the TIF, TIF district. Followed by resolution R-24-003. This is for bond 2019-A, original principal of 1.4 million, general obligation refunding bond, alternate revenue source, associated with the Euclid Avenue rebuild. Followed by, finally, the resolution R-24-004, bond 2019-B, with original principal of $2.8 million, general obligation refunding bond, alternate revenue source, associated with the logistics sites and the uh, Economic Development Administration. Uh, in the years past, we've um, passed these as a package. And there, all council members have reviewed uh, those um, resolutions and they're submitted for disposition. A motion that we approve the resolutions as presented. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any questions or comments? Please, any additional information? Sure, just to answer the question on what does this all mean. Um, basically, when these, when the bond ordinances were passed, it's a, basically a proposed tax levy against taxable property. Um, the county does have right to pose these taxes against the property owners. However, we what we're doing now is asking to abate those from the property owners because we have an alternate source of revenue for the bonds, bond payments. So really, if you think about the way we pay for these based on service fees, user fees, that type of thing, so it goes to the user instead of all the property owners, which is a better way of doing it. So it minimizes it for your, on your property tax side. So that's, it's a good way to, to manage it. It's much better. Um, that's really the gist of it. That's how they're all pretty much established. So we're getting to the end of them, though. That's so great. <laughs> how long are these bonds for? What's that? How long are these bonds for? Um, it's, I, I should have brought the list up here, but um, we're getting to the end of a couple of them. Okay. Yeah. And they've been refinanced over the years to help us with our yeah. interest rates. So mm -hmm. um, they usually 10 to 20 years. Beth. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. And Teresa did a good job clarifying that. Mm -hmm. Kirk, call the roll. Mm -hmm. Council Member Gomez? Aye. McCall? Aye. McCransky? Aye. Mayor Mabry? Aye. Thank you. Now on to the board reappointments. Uh, I motion that we approve board reappointments of Jackie Davis and Roddy Lang on the Planning Commission Board of Zoning Appeals for a three year term ending on 4 30, 2026. Second. Motion and second. Any questions or comments? Third call roll. Councilmember Gomez? Aye. McCall? Aye. McCransky? Aye. Mayor Mabry? Aye. Thank you. Now on to the city manager report, please. Uh, I don't have anything that's got official business that needs to be taken, but I do have a couple of items. Um, I, I first want to say um, to all the City of Princeton employees, especially our streets, cemetery, garbage, because we all work together, um, the last four to five days getting hit with two major snowstorms and then today getting hit with the temperatures that we've had. I don't know how they predict the weather and how they're going to manage the, the streets and clearing and all of that, but they've got the prioritization in, in place. They know what they're going to do. Um, they logged some long hours this weekend, so kudos to them. Um, I know we, we, we always get some complaints on certain areas, but I, you know, when you drive around, it's, it's impressive how much they tackle in that short period of a time. So um, I thank them on behalf of the city. Um, so. That's all I'll say there. I'm sure everybody agrees with us on that part. Um, council members, I gave you, uh, I just got this actually, uh, the November financial report. We haven't seen one of these for a while. Um, so this is looking at seven to eight months in. Things really, there's not any major surprises. The one that will probably stick out the most to you. Um, sales tax is staying fairly steady. If you look at the, if you're going to focus on the, the very last purpley line there. Um, not always as high as every month or higher than the, the previous year, but still staying fairly steady. Um, the hotel motel one is the one that's probably going to be the most shocking. Uh, however, if you recall maybe the last meeting, uh, Tori had went on a 
major push for these hotels that have been behind on their taxes and they do get those cut up so those lines are gonna come back up. So this is November's report, so December is when they started to get those those in. So um, that should be coming along. Uh, any questions on that? Um, last thing I have is the, I just got noticed on Friday evening, we did get approved for our EPA-led service line inventory grant uh, from the EPA. Um, what this is actually going to do is for our water department to start their inventory of lead service lines. If everybody recalls, this is starting to become a big issue. Uh, in order to get the grants to replace those lines, you have to do the inventory first. So we did secure that $40,000 grant, no match. Um, and we'll get going on that ASAP so we get the inventory going. So that was good news. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else? Okay, very good. Um, we we want to say a couple things under the uh, mayor's comments here. I'd like to make a couple quick comments and then, uh, Jen, are you going to visit with us a little bit tonight as well? Just for a minute. What's that? Just for a minute. Okay, sure. We'll get to that in just a okay. second. That's good. So, uh, Jerry Newman's uh, gone this evening. He's uh, uh, off just for this evening uh, with an illness. Uh, we appreciate Jerry Newman's uh, dedication to being on the council. He never misses a meeting. So uh, we're a, rough, a little rough here tonight trying to get everything worked out. We understand uh, trying to you know get these passed and things like that. You're doing a good job down there, Mike, filling in. <laughs> and I'm kind of like the guy that lost a seeing eye dog. I had cataract surgery on both eyes, and so I have these things as cheaters. And then I have the long distance vision, so if you see me going back and forth, and think, what, what's going on with this guy? So we're 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 all kind of hanging in here tonight, and uh, John Isaacson wasn't able to be here, um, with also a, a slight illness. So anyway, we're glad to be here tonight. Should we're glad. Me? Should we I, I'm good at long distance. I can see from here. To, I can see from here to Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Well, I ran over a steel today. That's not correct. But yeah. So thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Sure. Your confidence in me. I appreciate that. So anyway. Um, if I could, um, I'd like to just do this, um, and this is uh, a little bit prepared in the sense that uh, today is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and I just want to recognize this. Um, Dr. Uh, King was born January 15th of 1929. Uh, he was killed by an assassin April 4th of 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee at the age of 39 years old. I pulled out some quotes from Dr. King that I thought were appropriate for us as um, elected officials, and for folks that work full time as in, in the public uh, uh, spot. Uh, so we um, can learn from uh, Dr. King, and he talks about these in four quotes I'm going to read for you right now. Um, no work is insignificant. All labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance, importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. If I cannot do great things, I can do small things in a great way. There comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe nor political nor popular, but he must take it because conscience tells him it is right. And finally, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are we doing for others? So I like that uh, final one. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are we doing for others? So we appreciate uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, he would be 95 years old today if he was still alive. Um, so now with that said, um, I'd like to go on now, and if you'd like to, uh, Jenica, come to the podium and your positive prints, then great. I'm not rude, I just cannot get more. So. <laughs> okay, a couple of things. Um, good evening, thank you for braving the cold. Um, Something that I recognized three years ago when I started in the chamber role was that the, we have a very robust events calendar in this community. There's something going on all the time. Every day you can find something to do in Princeton, which is amazing. But we never had a place where you could access a calendar that housed the majority of those events. So we finally got our acts together this year and um, all of the community organizations, um, individuals, businesses, entities that have large significant events that bring people to town, whether it's chamber events, whether it's tourism events, whether it's Hornbaker's Garden annual artisan market that's become so popular. We decided that it needed to live in a printed publication and a calendar. So we finally have these. 
Um, with the weather, it delayed them a week. We were supposed to have them by the first, but it didn't quite make it. Um, so I'm here to tell you they are here and they're available for purchase. But I would like to hand one to each of you, as well as Tori, so that you guys can have them here. We are working on a few uh, places throughout town with some chamber member businesses that will also have them on hand for people to purchase, so you don't always have to come to the county for everything. So there's that, and I would also like to welcome um, the council. We have business after hours in our lotto, which is one of our biggest business after hours of the year this Thursday at the closet. Um, we're going to recognize our building improvement grant recipients. Um, and they're going to recognize their lending a hand grant recipients. So it should be a really fun night. Um, and something to add to that, we did some checking with the chamber um, back through our records. The building improvement grant here in this community should be very celebrated. Um, its inception was back in 2008. And since that time, we've given away just under $150,000 to chamber member businesses for the beautification of Princeton, and that's around 130 total grants. So um, we're going to talk about that Thursday. And then we have a morning mingle coming up Tuesday, all about new Illinois state laws that people should be aware of. And then in March, I just got off the phone with Janelle McCarter. We have secured a speaker, a speaker to come educate us about our tax bills and the assessments because we have noticed some fodder on social media and in the news about reading those things and understanding <coughs> them better. So um, we're working with the county and Janelle to make that happen to better educate the community. So exciting things. Um, please, please support us and grab our calendar and hoping that this becomes a yearly tradition. So thank you guys. Thank you. I for those self work. Fifteen dollars a piece. Sorry. It's a nice fundraiser as well. Yes. There's well, much work that goes into it. Sure. I'm going to leave it. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and go uh, on to old business. Is there any old business before the council this evening? Is there any new business before the council? Anyone else for public comment, period? Anything else? Okay, very good. Uh, we'll go ahead then and ask to adjourn the meeting here, if you would, Mike. Uh, we adjourn the regular meeting tonight, uh, and that's going to earn our regular meeting city council on Monday, February 5th, 2024, 6 p.m. at City Hall. We have a motion and a second. Third call roll. Council Member Gomez? Aye. McCall? Aye. McCransky? Aye. Mayor Mabry? Aye.